Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. This is the fourth tutorial of the Julia Tutorial 2021 series. My name is Joris Limonier and uh, we're gonna see today mutable structs and uh, multiple dispatch in Julia. Uh, this is something that is not in all languages, so maybe you're not familiar with it yet. Uh, so I'll explain what it is and, and then we'll, we'll use it and see how, we can, how it can come in handy. Um, I'm using Visual Studio Code with the Jupyter Notebook uh, environment or extension, whatever it is. Um, I'm not using uh, Jupyter Notebook as usual in the browser, but it's the same thing. So if you have Jupyter Notebook in the browser, it works just as well. Um, all right, so let's make a first mutable struct, which is called American Flat. Um, and we're going to give it a couple properties. So the area, which is float64, um, the price, which is also float64, and the landlord, which is going to be a string. Oops, string. Okay, so the point here is to make an American flat first, and then we're going to make a French flat a French flat and so th these are structs so these are like objects so you'd think of American flat as mm, an object that contains these three things three properties um, so every time you have an American fla flat you're going to want to give it an area a price and the landlord um, and same for a French flat because we haven't changed anything here so far um, but just to make it clear, this is you. This is going to be like in square feet, for instance. Um, this is going to be um, in US dollars, um, and this is going to be like you're going to have Mister uh, Mister dot something, and um, and for the French flat, you're going to have um, the area because of the units because the units are different. We're going to want the area in uh, square meters. Oops, sorry, square meters. Um, no. The price in euros. Um, yeah, and uh, the landlord is going to be the convention in France is to put m dot and then something. Okay, uh, so if you run this cell. I run I run my notebook before notebook before so this was pretty quick but if it's the first time you run it then it's it's gonna be it's gonna take some time but it's fine don't don't worry um, and then we're gonna make some we're gonna make first instances of those structs right so here we created the concept of an American flat and a French flat and now we want to actually like make one instance of those so make one French flat so or one American flat so if we have American flat we should call AF um, and this is going to be American flat of and then we can have like 25.5 so that would be that would be the area maybe if you stay on it no it doesn't it doesn't show hints uh, maybe if I run it then we're gonna have uh, hints from the like the equivalent of pi cents or something like that. Uh, then the price could be like 750,000 USD. So we're just giving it um, numbers here. We're not passing the unit uh, with it. And the landlord is going to be Mr. whatever, like Turner or something like that, whatever it is. Uh, so we, we run that and you see that it created an instance of this struct. Um, by the way, the keyword mutable is because we like if we want to change some of these uh, argument, uh, some of these properties, uh, we need the mutable struct. Otherwise, the, the compiler is not too happy about it. Um, and then we're going to make a French flat. So I just copied this line, which is uh, alt shift uh, down arrow on my keyboard. It's probably the same for you. Uh, and we're going to make a French flat and so I'm going to keep the same area, keep the same price. And here um, I'm going to put M dot Turner for now. Uh, we'll see what we do with that later. So I create it and you see that we have a French flat with these 
things just as we'd like them. Um, okay, so this is for structs and now we have, what we'd like to do is we'd like to have a um, function that behaves differently depending on what input you give it. So um, in Python, for instance, you'd have methods associated to a struct. So you, you, in Python, you do something like uh, writing a function inside of your class and you would have um, my phone, whatever, and then you'd say area and then you'd write uh, area like return area times two, whatever. And so in Python, you do it like this. You'd put functions inside of your struct. But in Julia, we, we don't do this. In Julia, the way it's done usually, it's you make a function, which is like, let's say we want to describe. Um, I'm going to leave it empty for now. And we want it to behave differently, whether we have a French flat in here or, or we have an American flat in here. So if we have an American flat, um, so, okay, let's call it flat. Sorry, let's call it flat and give it the, the type American flight, American flat. So here we, we say, if the input, which we call flat, has the type American flat, then we're gonna do this. Um, and just, if you wanna check, um, okay, let's, let's maybe do it below. Oops. Okay, if we want the type of American flat, it's American flat. So you see that this thing here is of type American flat. So it's a struct American flat, so it has a type American flat. Um, yeah, so this is this is like this is the explanation why here we consider if flat is of type American flat, because indeed American flat is a type. It's not just the, the like for me, in, in the first place, I thought a struct may just be some object, but then you may have some type, but actually it defines the type that you have. It may be dumb, but initially it wasn't obvious for me. Um, okay, and then we're gonna want to print, print ln, and uh, we, we're gonna print uh, American flat, American flat, and then we're gonna print uh, the area with, so you know, in, in Julia you can, if you put dollar sign and then parenthesis, it's gonna print uh, whatever um, variable you, you, you call uh, in here uh, between the parentheses. So in Python, this would be the equivalent of uh, string formatting where you put an F here and then you put uh, curly, curly braces. But in Julia, we just use dollar sign and uh, and parentheses. And here we're gonna get the flat, and then we're gonna access the area by using a dot flat dot area. So this is this is gonna take a flat. So the flat is gonna be American flat, right? So it's gonna get inside of AF and get the area argument, which is which is the first one because it was the first one here, right? <clears throat> so this is so. This is going to be the area, um, area flat dot area, and then we want it like uh, square feet or something like that, right? Because just it's going to be just because it's going to be in square feet. So let's just quickly call our function and see if it works. Uh, desk of AF. Okay, so we got American flat and then twenty five point five square feet because here we have twenty five point five square feet, right? And then we can do the same with um, the price and price is gonna be in uh, US dollars. I'm putting a backslash here because otherwise this dollar sign is, which is supposed to be like an actual dollar for the currency is, is uh, can be misunderstood by Julia as um, this dollar sign, which means that whatever comes afterwards is gonna be a variable, not some, not some string. Uh, and this, whoops, and this is gonna be price, right? So we want the price in US dollars. And the last one is landlord. Landlord, let's capitalize. And we're gonna have a flat dot landlord. And the landlord is not in US dollars. It's just gonna be a name, so we put nothing afterwards. And now if we call our desk uh, function, which describes, 
we see the area, the price, and Mr. Turner. So everything everything is is great. Um, okay, so that, that works fine. So now if instead of AF uh, for American flats, we want FF for French flat. Uh, we get an error, we should get an error, yes. Because FF is a French flat, it has a type French flat, and Julia here is expecting American flat. And you see here, uh, Julia only uh, expects a uh, flat which is American flat. It, it doesn't know how to deal with a flat that's not an American flat, so it can't deal with French flat. So what we're going to do, we're going to copy that function and we're going to want, instead of an American flat, we're going to want a French flat. Uh, French flat, yeah. And uh, so let's, we're going to change what happens in here, French flat. Uh, so that, and this way Julia is going to know what to do when you give it a French flat inside of the desk function. Um, so let's, let's check it out if it works now. Yes. So now we get French flat and we get uh, area, which is 25.5 square meters. But so like it works fine, except that it's wrong. Um, because here, when we have 25.5, if it's a French flat, this is going to be the um, the the area of the flat in in square meters, not in square feet. So what we want here is we can either put uh, square meters here, and here we would have to put euros. Um, but then, like for US people, it's not going to mean anything. Like let's say you guys don't know about uh, square meters and and euros, you're not familiar with it. So instead of this, what we could do is we could keep US dollars in square feet. And we're gonna introduce um, two variables here. So like square feet to square meters. And this is gonna be, this is the conversion rate. So it's gonna be 12.7639 when I looked it up. And something like Euro to USD. And this is gonna be, it was 1.16 when I looked it up. Um, and now, instead of having a flat area here, we're going to want something else in here, which is going to be in square feet. So we need to convert the um, area in square from from square meters to square feet. Uh, so what we're going to do for that is we're going to do something like square feet area, and we're going to call that. Um, so this is going to be the area, so flat dot area, which we're going to multiply by uh, ten point ten point seven six three nine, right? Um, and if you open Google and you go to um, one square meter to square feet, yeah, this is this is how I got this number right. And then we do the same with uh, with uh, dollars. So it's going to be um, USD price, and this is going to be uh, flat dot price times. Okay, that's space put some space here and flat dot price times uh, euro to USD oh, and actually the reason we we introduced the variables was in order to use to use them square feet square meter right so this means you take the flat dot area but it's a French flat so instead of just displaying the flat dot area ah, I'm missing a sorry um, you multiply it by this conversion rate in order to get square feet instead of square meters. And same for the price. Instead of displaying uh, the price in euros, you display it. You you convert it to USD, and then you can show it straight. Uh, you can show it in, in USD, right? Um, okay, let's forget about the landlord for now, and uh, we're gonna run that. And euro to oops, sorry, I have a typo here. This is euro to USD. There you go. And, oh, we forgot to change it here. Obviously, we have to change it here. Uh, so this is going to be area, square feet area. And this is going to be USD price. My bad. All right, so there we have it. Now, we, this is the the area. This is the equivalent of 20, 25.5 uh, square meters that we, had, that we had here. This is the equivalent in square feet, right? And this is the equivalent of... Mm, whatever we had in euros uh, converted to USD. Um, okay, now this is ugly, right? Like we, we don't want that. Um, and basically it comes from uh, rounding when the computer makes operations. 
So like it should have been eight seven zero 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 whatever, and uh, and because of rounding, then we get this. So what we can do in order not to get this ugly thing is we can round it. So let's say we call round on all of this. And we're going to round it, I never remember the arguments, it's digits equals two. And this way, yes. So this way we get uh, two decimal points. Well, like here it was zero, zero, so it just displays one. But if we had some other prices, it would display two decimal points. And we can do the same with the area if we want. So let's say round, round, and then this, and digits equal two. And we get this rounded as well, right? With two decimal, uh, two digits uh, after the the dot, right? Um, all right, and uh, and this is great because now we have the area in square feet. So the flat has it in square meters, but then we convert it to square feet, and the flat has the price in euros, and then we convert it into USD. Um, and then what we'd like to do now is displaying the landlord name. But this is the French version of the name, and we would like to have the American version of the name with MR dot and then the name. So what we're going to do is we're going to call something US name, and this is going to be uh, my flat dot uh, landlord, right? So we're going to want to start with the French name inside the the, the so landlord attribute of a French flat. So flat dot landlord uh, here, and then we're going to um, we're going to apply a replace on that, replace, and we're going to replace with, uh, so what do we want to replace? We want to replace m dot by mr dot. So this is a, a function that basically takes whatever this string is and it replaces the m dot by mr dot. It's, it's pretty straightforward, I guess. And here we need to call us name then. So if we try that, we should have mr.turner now, and we do. So that's great. So that's great. So now, uh, yeah, if, if, so you see that if we call, if we call desk of AF, let's, let's put some pretty hyphens here, print and, and then there you go. Okay. So you see, if we call it on AF, it displays the normal, uh, it just displays the, the, the area and the price as it was. And Mr. Turner, there's nothing to change, right? And if you do it with the French flat, then it displays the converted from square meters to square feet area and the converted price from uh, euros to USD. Um, and so there you have it. So there you have it. Okay, so this is multiple dispatch in a nutshell. Uh, and actually just one last thing. If you go in here on desk, you see that you have two definitions of desk, one for American flat and one for French flat. And basically you can have as many as you like. You can have, sometimes you have many definitions because it just makes sense to define many types of flat, like I don't know, some uh, Turkish flat or I don't know, other countries where they use different units, for instance, maybe Turkey doesn't. Um, and you could think about uh, uh, another function for the perimeter, for instance. Uh, like if you want to compute the perimeter of, of a square or the perimeter of a triangle, you're going to use different formulas. So you want to create different uh, behaviors based on, on the arguments, right? Um, so there you have it. So this is multiple dispatch and uh, structs. Uh, if there's anything unclear, just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll make it clear. Um, yeah, and besides that, I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you again for another one pretty soon. Bye.